Hello again. We are starting the last lesson of this section and in it we are going to apply what we have learned. Well, this time we meet Jota and Amanda in the lab who are using an analog oscilloscope that has a cathode ray tube. This device is a measuring device that allows us to visualize the voltage as a function of time and is an application of the action of the electrostatic field on charged particles. Specifically, what we are going to see is that electric charges are deflected by electrostatic fields and that this deflection depends on the value of the electric field applied to them. Basically, an oscilloscope consists of an incandescent filament that emits electrons from the cathode to the anode. Deflector plates, which are these here, which are responsible for deflecting the electron beam when a potential difference is applied to them by touch. So there will be an electrostatic field. And it also has a fluorescent coating, which is the screen, in which upon impacting the electron on it will produce a flash. What we will see on the oscilloscope screen will be a signal of this type in which on the vertical axis we have represented the voltage and on the horizontal axis we have the time. The time. The signal can be of different types, sawtooth, square, etc. but basically it will be like this. Well, let's see an example. Jota and Amanda tells us that we have an electron whose kinetic energy is 4 times 10 times 10 times minus 16 joules and it is moving to the right along the axis of a cathode ray tube, as shown in the figure. It is known that the strength of the applied electric field between the deflector plates is 4 times 10 raised to 4 newtons split per coulomb, and that at any other point in the tube the field is zero. He asks us to calculate the distance the electron is from the axis of the tube when it is about to leave the deflector plates. And secondly, the distance from the axis at which the electron hits the fluorescent screen. Let's go to it. Well, to calculate the distance with respect to the tube axis, the first thing we have to see is that we have two axes of motion along the x-axis. There is no force, so the acceleration is going to be zero and the velocity is going to be constant. It has a velocity because it has a kinetic energy being constant velocity, we will have a uniform rectilinear motion along the y-axis if we disregard the gravitational action and only take into account the electrostatic force, we will have a force, we will have an acceleration and therefore it will be a uniformly accelerated rectilinear motion. The composition of the motions along the x-axis direction and the y-axis direction will give us a profile like the one we see on the screen what we want to determine is that distance from which the electrons will be deflected. Well, we have a kinetic energy along the x-axis and therefore we can, from the expression of the kinetic energy, it is a mean of the mass times the velocity squared, we can clear the velocity. On the other hand, we know that this is a uniform rectilinear motion and therefore x will be equal to v times t, x sub 1 equals v sub x times t and therefore clearing the time we will have that it will be x sub 1 split by v sub x. We substitute v sub x in this expression and we obtain the time as a function of the kinetic energy and the mass of the electron and the distance which we also know. Along the y-axis we have said that this is a uniformly accelerated rectilinear motion since we have an electrostatic force. By having an electrostatic force that force will be equal to Q, the charge of the electron times the field, as any force will be equal to the mass of the electron times the acceleration and therefore we can express the acceleration as a function of that electrostatic field. The deviation, that is the space traveled along that axis, is going to be equal to a half of a times t squared because it is a uniformly accelerated rectilinear motion. Well, we have the time as a function of the data that the problem gives us, the acceleration and the deviation, if we substitute the acceleration and the time. In this expression, we obtain that y 
and therefore the deviation, will depend on the electrostatic field. That is, we have seen that there is a certain deflection whenever we have a field, so the electrons are deflected, and that deflection depends on the value of the electrostatic field. Well, now we will substitute the values that the problem gives us in the expression of the deflection, and we obtain that the deflection is 6.3 times 10 raised to minus 3 meters. We still need to determine the distance at which the electrons hit the screen. The electrons impact against the fluorescent screen, i.e., we are asked to calculate d2, d sub 2. By triangle similarity, we see that d sub 2 is a d as x sub 2 plus x sub 1 is a x sub 2 plus x sub 1 is a x sub 1. We clear d sub 2, that is what we want to calculate, and we see that it depends on d. We substitute d that we had obtained previously, and we will only need to substitute values. We know how much is x sub 1 and x sub 2, because the statement of the problem gives them to us. And we finally obtain that d sub 2 is 25.6 times 10 raised to minus 3 meters. Well, what have we seen in this class? We've seen an analog oscilloscope that has a cathode ray tube. And we've observed that this deflection depends on the applied electrostatic field. And that the oscilloscope is going to allow us, it's a measuring device that's going to allow us to visualize the voltage signals as a function of time. That's all. See you in the next class.